Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate how this actually would work. Uh, here we have this is representing our catchment discharging into this inlet and you can see that we have gutters on either side of the road and then each of the inlets is meeting this manhole you know basically collecting the flow from both sides of the road and then the underground um, flow is going through that pipe PC3 put that here relabel it a little bit better okay so that's an example I'm going to show you here um, this was an intersection we talked about placing our inlets right there to avoid the flow becoming a hazard on the road and we have our gutters uh, in that location I'm going to turn this off for a minute so you get to see how our gutters are placed so let's take a look at how we have established these gutters here um, well we say here what kind of gutter is it it's the same as the start node gutter so what does that actually mean um, when we go to our inlets we've specified the catalog inlet to be let me uh, edit this di 10a so it's a combination curb and great inlet and you get to see all these physical properties um, and in here we've specified that it is on grade so there's the possibility of bypass flow notice that um, this we have flow from here to here and then eventually through this outlet but we will have flow from here to here and then from here to here so here is our lowest point right um, so any flow that does not get captured here is going to end up at this i2r um, inlet okay so let's go back to where we were so we said inlet location uh, here's this the road slope uh, the longitudinal slope so let me show you actually what I mean by that this is the slope I'm talking about okay and then we enter the, the length of our grade curb opening length and also the clogging factor so I mentioned before that when you have grades you get to specify uh, how the debris or garbage is going to reduce the efficiency so we can say by saying 10 we're saying okay reduce the efficiency by an extra 10 percent because there's potential uh, clogging and um, and that's it so basically we use that information and we specify these are uh, our gutters so we were here I'm sorry because we had to define we were, we had said here that we didn't want to specify the gutter at this location we just wanted to follow the same profile as we had described here so that's why we're here um, the gutter you can either define it from a catalog or do a user define in this case we're saying it's conventional and the road cross slope I closed my my graphic but it's basically uh, the road slope in here okay so that's that's how we specify our inlets how we specify our gutters and let me run this simulation I'm gonna run it for a 10-year storm that's what happens when you start just clicking things around <laughs> okay all right so here we run our model and let's see what is going on at this inlet for example so the first thing we want to look at is what happened at that inlet so we were able to the capacity is one cubic feet per second um, the efficiency is set to 57.4 percent or, or calculated to that and basically if you remember that was the flow intercepted or total flow flow intercepted divided by total flow 
Okay, so we know the point 21 uh, flow was coming in, and we can see where my bypass flows. Uh, where are we? Bypass flows. So point 21 flow arrive at this location, and where is our flow intercepted? That should have been there. Uh, intercepted flow. Okay. Actually, so the flow to the inlet is point 0.23, and of that point 0.21 gets intercepted. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And therefore, 88.3% is the capture efficiency. Okay. This efficiency, I'm sorry, I, it's what it would be if the flow in the gutter was the maximum design spread because we know what the maximum spread is. Okay, so that's how we can see the flows in our gutters and really what you're always looking for is to see if you meet your constraints. So you can go here and go Uh, 3.7 feet. Let's see if we had done. We didn't do this particular design, but we can take a look if we had done this design ourselves. We had set a maximum spread of 8 feet, okay, which is pretty typical. So 3.7 is not bad. And if you had uh, some locations where that eight feet was violated, you'd get a message here in the user notifications. Okay, now this last catchment, I wanted to take a look at it um, with you guys because this is an in-sag. So remember we have basically a depression there because the road flow is coming from the road in this direction and flow is coming in this direction. So it all has to be captured here. It doesn't have anywhere else to go. It's the lowest point. So that's why we're setting this as an in-sag inlet. And you can see it's a um, combination inlet here. So you see the great length, curb opening, and a clogging factor. So it's the same um, type of inlet as we had in the other um, catch basins. But here we have it uh, connect in, in an in-sag configuration, right? So in the location in-sag. Why am I showing you this? Because we know eventually all the water has to come through there, but that's the most risky of all our inlets because if the spread is violated there, we're going to have problems, right? And that's where it's most likely going to happen. So we can go over here and look at our spread. Uh, it's actually not bad, 2.5 feet. Let's see, is that the only in-sag? Uh, this one here too is at a depression, so it's in-sag. And look at the spread, 3.7. So it's all in a very um, manageable range. Okay, so that's all we have to set up for gutters and uh, inlets. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.